Good morning. It is 10 o'clock and it and I see Jenny Lang is here. How are you? Oh, I hear, I hear something interesting going on, Ginny. I'm going to mute you for a second. Um, I can't see you. <laughs> I'd love to be able to see you. I'm going to pause the recording until... Um, good morning. Today is August 15th. It, it is 10.03 Pacific time. And today is our second live uh, sizzling speaker sheet challenge office hour where I work with you in real time to make your sizzling speaker sheet even hotter and we talk about relevant issues around getting booked getting paid and uh, make, making pitches so that we can take the stages that are right for our message and make more of the difference we're here to make in the world and joining me today is Jenny Lang Lori Lori you're gonna have to help me with this pronunciation of your name <laughs> And Marianne Osher. Hey, oh, Shoal. Yeah. Very good. Shoal. All right. Say it again. Shoal. So there's a tip right there. When you have a name that causes some people um, a little challenge about being fearful about saying it wrong, even on your speaker sheet or on your speaker introduction, you can share that the, the um, what do you call that? The, um, like I often say, Jutton rhymes with button so that people can say oh okay because j-u-e-t-t-e-n some people might be tempted to introduce me as Jewetten, and it's jutton like button so i can't remember what what that's called but if there's a lori toll like shoal or like troll or something like that so people don't mess it up i see you Ginny. yay <laughs> so um so anyway, what we do on these calls is uh, we help make your sizzling secret sheet better. And um, Marianne has been working like um, beautifully and you have done a great job. And so I'm going to call on you first, Marianne, and see um, how you feel about how it's coming together. And if there are any comments or questions that I can answer for you as you um, get ready to pitch yourself to important people around the country. <laughs> so want to speak up? Sure. Can you hear me today? Yeah, I can hear you loud. Yay! Yay. <laughs> <laughs> Unfortunately, I was really booked all the way up until now, and I forgot to put on my uh, put my camera on. So I'm sorry I don't have the camera on. But anyway, I'm thrilled with the way it's going, Nancy. I, you know, you've been you've given me such great suggestions. I'm really happy. I mean, how do you feel about the where it is right now? I think it's really strong, and that's one of the reasons I asked you to make it turn it into a PDF that you could upload to the to the group. Do you know how to do that? Oh, I do know how to do that. I will do it right now. Yeah, because it's nice for people to see, you know, just one week into the course that someone's already pretty much completed her speaker sheet and done a really nice job. Um, I'll just call out a few things that I really like about what you've done here. Um, you've identified, you know, guiding, guiding, guiding 60 somethings to achieve lasting happiness in a sea of life changes that can rock their retirement boat. That's what it says right at the top. And what's really great about that is you've named and claimed the audience that can benefit most from your message. And you share what they're, what's in it for them in your, in terms of a lasting result so that people know whether or not they want to read more. And but now, wait a minute, before you go on, Nancy gets credit for that, because when we worked together, gee, Nancy, five, six years ago, uh, you came up with a version of that for, for what I was doing at the time, and it worked very, very well for me. Now, my speaker sheet wasn't anything what it is now, but um, so that's, that's Nancy's brilliance, not mine. Well, it's all a collaboration. I appreciate you saying that, but it's cool when you come up with a line of phrase that actually opens doors. And so since you said it's open doors... I mean, can you get more specific to give some support or encouragement to people who might be earlier in their process? Like what kind of doors has it opened and how, what kind of gigs have you been getting? And is it opening the door for you to coach more and make more money? Just share a little bit about your experience because I think that will be encouraging to people. Well, my business is uh, retirement and relationship coaching. When I first started working with Nancy, I was only doing relationship, but then um, I realized that relationship coaching is a little tougher sell than retirement coaching. But more, <laughs> but more specifically, what I really found out was that a lot of people that were coming to me for retirement, for relationship 
a coach who were really having trouble with retirement and that was causing their relationship problems. So I expanded the umbrella and put relationship under it. But the, to answer your question very specifically, uh, just, uh, just a couple of weeks ago, I, start, I started working on a um, speaking tour, if you will. I was invited to be the keynote speaker at an event in Sarasota the first, at the November 1st. And we're from Naples, which is two hours south of there. So I said, hey, this is an opportunity. And so I contacted a number of people to see if I could set up um, speaking opportunities because through the speaking, speaking is how I market my coaching business. So to answer your question about what doors it opens, it opens the doors to get the speaking gig so I can, so I can uh, be known, liked, and, and, um, uh, you know, and respected so that people would hire me as a coach. But now I have another purpose and that is also in addition to sell my book at the back of the room and so those those um, gigs in Naples were important to me and the what and I, I used this title and my old speaker sheet and um, several two people that I sent it to said I really like the happiness and it sure does rock your boat in retirement if you don't have it right and so that was you know, their, their opening about what they liked about my speaker sheet. I love that. And so when we go into it, I'm just going to use Marianne as an example because um, her bio, she, she first just identifies herself as a motivating speaker and then her other roles, educator, author, retirement coach, and consultant. She's a seasoned expert who focuses on assisting people to build happy, fulfilling lives. She talks about her recently released book, which is also an opportunity to monetize. And then she says that she's retired twice after spending over 40 years in the corporate world. And she shares some of her education and her credibility and is a distinguished Toastmaster, which is a really important thing to say, especially if you're a speaker. People know that you're not going to um and ah and go over time, which is really important for program directors who want to stay on their point. So I love that. Um, your bullet points um, are very active. Um, uh, it says, bring Marianne to your audience to welcome calm in the storm, so you're reinforcing your title with your call to action. And the one thing I suggested that you do is um, add in something about get in touch for a custom quote if you get paid to speak um, because some of us get paid to speak and some of us don't and we use speaking for free as a way to get clients into our practice and so if you're someone who is over speaking for free don't be afraid to say get in touch for a custom quote because then right out of the box you're letting people know that you are um, in a different bucket how's that <laughs> <laughs> but I think you did a nice job and I think seeing is believing and I believe you designed this in PowerPoint is that right I did and so it looks it looks good and when you um, if you were inspired to use a, a graphic designer to add some additional sizzle um, Victoria Vinton is the graphic designer that I've been referring people to for 15 years and she just does a great job and she offers my clients a special rate so um, her um, it's Victoria I'll, I'll post I'll post um, her email address in the Facebook group in case you want to check her out there are other resources like Fiverr and also 99 designs um, if you feel like you want to hire someone um, and you want to do it on a budget-friendly uh, basis. Um, another idea for design is uh, Canva, which is free, but um, one of our clients, um, Vanessa Newport, used Canva to create her speaker sheet, and it looked just as good as any professional that I've seen. So it just sort of depends on if that's your jam to do graphic design or not. But um, I know when Tommy Wolf, um, she designed hers and I've, I've shown it to you before but she's really kind of a mover and shaker kind of kind of person and she has a two-page speaker sheet and there's just something sizzly and spectacular about the way it looks and the credibility it conveys just by the way that it looks and um, I want you all to have that kind of pizzazz because if there is decision making by committee and people are sitting around a table trying to decide who's going to be the one they choose for January, February, or March, or who they're going to have on their keynote stage. If they're rifling through papers, uh, 
you know, the one who's dressed and ready to go sometimes rises to the top of the stack and the one who has the simple Word document that's very straightforward um, may have excellent content but may not look as polished. So it's really up to you what you decide to do. Um, and I'll make a confession. I mean, I have a new topic that my husband and I are delivering to financial advisors and we're really early on in figuring out what's going to resonate. So we've been very startup lean in the way that we've approached it. And just in the early going, I just created a simple Word document that had our photo and pictures of our various published works. But that simple document has gotten us booked several times already. And that gives me confidence that it's worth the investment to go and have it polished and made beautiful because it's already opened two or three really big doors in a very short period of time. And when you get that kind of feedback, it just sort of lets you know, okay, lean startup or not, uh, I'm going to go for this because the more big audiences I can get in front of, the greater impact I can make and the more people I can bring into the fold for whatever it is my next step wants to be. So, so good job, Marianne. I think you're a rock star. And <laughs> Thanks. I have, I have one last question. One yeah. Your question. That's mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. You, you, as you, you read the beginning, my bio saying I'm a motivating speaker. And it's been bothering me a little bit because I don't consider myself a motivating speaker. I consider myself, and the feedback I've gotten is that I'm a more inspiring speaker. Do you think there's a difference between, because I'm not a motivational speaker, that's not it, but I have a lot of enthusiasm and it, and it gets people um, inspired to take action. Um, I'm so glad you asked that question. I just got a notice from Robin Daly who wants to join us today and she can't find the, um, the call-in instructions, so I'm sending her to, them to her right now. And um, so forgive me for that. So that gives me an opportunity to talk about the four different kinds of speakers. There are informational speakers, there are inspiring speech speakers, there are motivational speakers, and there are transformational speakers. Those are the four primary buckets. And I like to quip that an informational speaker could be someone like the person that you take driver's training with when you get a ticket and you have to sit in that room with bars on the windows and you can't get out until you've done your time. <laughs> so um, information, inspiration, motivation, and transformation. And so, Ask yourself, where do you fit? Is it just, I'm delivering content because they need to get continuing education credit and it doesn't matter if I'm really in dynamic or fa fantastic or full of um, vim and vigor. Is, um, it's just for the purpose of education and information. Is it, are you inspiring them with a compelling story? Are you motivating them to take some kind of action? Or are you changing their life in the room because of whatever message that you deliver? Uh, uh, you might, if, I mean, what resonates most for you, Marianne? I well, mean, I'm, you can also, I, one other thing, you can go off the block and say, I'm a out of the box speaker. I'm a, you know, with her unique blend of humor and, and storytelling, Marianne. I mean, everybody's got a certain style that grabs people at hello. So if it doesn't fit into one of those four buckets, what do people, I mean, what would you just say about yourself? Well, people have told me both that my, my talks are inspiring, but also that they're transformational. But the transformation really comes more with the work that I do with them as coaching, on, on a coaching basis. So I don't know that that fits for speaking. But of the four, I think inspiring feels better to me than motivating. Okay, then change it. Okay. And then another thing you can do, especially if you're, a, you know, it's not everybody's loud and proud and wants to beat the drum about how awesome they are. Is anybody willing to raise their hand and say they've felt uncomfortable doing that? Yeah. <laughs> so if that is your um, bias, you can lead with what audience members say, you know, Time and time again, audience members are inspired and called to take powerful action as a direct result of Marianne's life-changing Rock Your Retirement talks. If you start that way, then you're attributing the rave about you to what audience members have said 
and that feels better for some speakers. Which do you think is more powerful? I mean, that, that fits my personality better, uh, but what do you think is more powerful in terms of the event planner? But you know, what are they gonna respond to? Well, that's an interesting question. Um, event planners have to manage a lot of variables and a lot of details and have Thanksgiving dinner come out on time and all together all at once. And so for me, one of the things that sets me apart is I'm a pleasure to work with in every possible way. And I don't have a diva attitude that I'm going to show up early, I'm going to stay late, and I'm going to go above and beyond the call to make sure that this was the best decision that they could have made. And that is something that has been my secret sauce, even though I'm not the most famous or the most, you know, whatever language you want to use. But being a pleasure to work with and leaving your ego at the door and doing whatever is necessary to make the event planner look like a superstar. If that's part of what you do, it doesn't hurt to mention it. Um, okay. If you don't, if you mention on your speaker sheet, that's fine. But if you mention it when you're actually having a conversation with the meeting planner, if they ask you, you know, what is something about you that would compel us to say yes instead of maybe, that could be something that you have ready to share because sometimes with big events, I don't know if this has ever happened to you, but sometimes, you know, there's a speaker that takes, that was given an hour and took an hour and a half. And no matter how many times that they had the um, five minutes, three minutes, two minutes, the person, you know, the card at the back of the room, the speaker wouldn't cut herself short. And the trouble with that is the person who was supposed to come next gets 30 minutes cut from his or her time through no fault of their own. That has happened to me more than a few times. And because my speaker, my speaker topic is structured so that I can cut out sections if I need to and not be flustered, that's a really nice thing to be able to say to somebody. If, if the, pers the person that went on goes for an hour and a half and you need me to be on the fly and take my hour long talk and cut it down to 30 minutes, I'll make it happen and they won't feel like they've missed out on a thing. That helps a meeting planner know that you're, they're dealing with a total professional. And so be a pleasure to work with. You know, the audience should be wowed and amazed, but the meeting planner should be delighted and inspired that they made a really good choice. And to the extent that you can meet both of those criteria, you'll be a winner. Great. That's great advice. Yeah. Yeah. Have any of you ever had that happen where you were booked to sp you speak and somebody, Ginny, why don't you speak up and tell us like what happened and what that was like? I'm going to unmute you. Oh, we got, we got sound problems there. When I try to... Now... Not, what happens is you sound like Minnie Mouse. <laughs> and I don't know what that is, but go ahead and type in the chat if you can. And, and, and you know what I'd really like you to do, Ginny, because you submitted your speaker sheet. Do you have your cell phone nearby where you could actually dial in so that we can hear you in addition to being able to see you? Because I, I think it would be helpful for us to be able to talk because you've done a really nice job on your speaker sheet. And I made some comments in the, in the Facebook group. For those of you who haven't submitted yet, I think you might be inspired and also learn from some of the comments that I post in the Facebook group about people's speaker sheets. And, um, and let's see if we can get Ginny to, don't get all flustered. <laughs> um, let me see if I can help you. The phone number is one six six nine. Let me just oh, uh, forgive me, Ginny. It's one six six nine nine hundred eight. I'm sorry, one six six nine nine hundred six eight three three. And then there's a certain code you have to type in, and the code is four three, two, seven, one, six, two, one, three, pound. And if you're able to do that, we should be able to hear you. 
and that'll be great. Nancy, okay. while, while Virginia's getting, to, uh, I just have a question. Okay. Don't, you, you wanted me to upload the PDF file, mm -hmm. and I'm not seeing where I should do that. Oh, uh, in the Facebook group, there's a files tab. Oh, in, the in, the in the Facebook group. I yeah, was thinking, I just want okay. people to be able to see it because, um, yeah. Let's see if Ginny. So, Lori, since we're waiting for Ginny to join us, uh, I'm going to unmute you and see how you're doing. So I'm working on mine. So, uh, and, uh, you know, a little bit with me. This this is not my main thing. I, I run other companies, and the the number one reason why I wanted to join this is because I have a, a large speech to give in September. So I'm thinking this is going to help me. Um, I am not looking to go out on the road full time to be doing this on a regular basis because it would take so far away from uh, the company that I currently own and run. So this all been amazing because as I go through I, it is helping me put together the speech that I have to give in September ah. and, yeah and I know Nancy when you and I talked on the phone I, you know I'll be looking to probably book you a little bit more one-on-one -on -one time to help me kind of polish it up so that's really my main interest but I do have my sheet started it's not complete but I am committed to getting it done because I think as I give my presentation in September for a very specific group, I think it would be really nice to hand out my speaker sheet. Yes, I, I, I agree. And I, Jenny, I see that you've dialed in, so we're good. I'm going to call on you in just a minute. And I'm just, I just want to say one more thing to Lori before I, um, I move to you, which is, I think I may have said this last week too, but when you get invited to give a talk and the talk is important, sometimes we can have butterflies, anxiety, um, anticipation, all kinds of those kinds of feelings and emotions. And sometimes we can feel imposter disease, like I can't believe they asked me to talk about that, and what if I fail, and what if I buff it, and duff it, or whatever, <laughs> whatever. We've all had those kinds of feelings. But the neat thing about creating a speaker sheet is like, they, they, they chose you for a topic. And so you've got a topic that you wanna talk about, and you can ask them, how much time will I have? And um, what is the outcome that you're hoping to achieve in the room? And what's the theme of the conference? And what would make the best outcome possible? You know, ask the person all these kinds of questions so you can understand more clearly what it is that they're trying and aiming to achieve. And then when you actually take your talk title and you think, okay, well, I have 45 minutes and this is the theme and the tone of the conference, what can I do with 45 minutes? How many points can I possibly convey? How many stories can I share? How many um, activities or audience engagement questions can I possibly ask? And then of course, what is it that I want the audience to be, have, or do as a result of me being in the room? And that helps you structure what it is that you're going to talk about. And that's why, you know, you can have a talk title, you can have your three or four or five intoxicating bullet points, you can um, uh, be clear about what next you want people to do. And if all that's clear on the speaker sheet, that just gives you a lot more confidence that you you can do it. And when you do do it, um, this is just a little ninja tip. If you ask a friend to capture your talk on video on your phone, capture the audio of your talk um, on your phone, um, ask if they're going to have a videographer there so that you can capture it. Because one awesome talk delivered to the right audience can bring you a video that can help book that same talk many other ways. And you know what? If it's a free talk, for example, you can repurpose that and have that be something you share across social media or on your YouTube channel or who knows what else. But I can't tell you how many speakers delivered the best talk of their lives and there was no audio, there was no video, and there was no proof. And they were just kicking themselves because had that been captured somehow, some way, it could have opened the door for many more things to come. And that's really what a lot of us want. So those are just a couple little practical, tactical things I'm mentioning to you, Lori, as you prepare for this talk. Um, the better prepared you are in all of these ways, the more you can rock it, and the more you can make it pay off in all the ways that matter most to you. That's excellent. Excellent advice. I appreciate that. One, one more question. I, since it is 45 minutes, and like to me, that's eternity on stage. 
<laughs> and, uh, I, I, I'm pretty good at speaking. I've done it uh, for a lot of different groups and large different audiences. This is a little bit different. I'm used to, you know, having a speech almost delivered to me by a PR agency, you know, with, with uh, videos and pictures and teleprompters and this is a podium and I'm on my own on this one. Um, what would you recommend in terms of being able to get someone to help with maybe some of the, uh, the uh, pictures or videos that I'd like to add into this presentation? Well, um, there is a company called punchslide.com. Okay. And I want to tell you, up until I found punchslide, I made my PowerPoint slides the best that I could using imagery that I bought from 123royaltyfree.com and photos from my own camera, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Pretty straightforward stuff. But when I got invited to do this really big deal, I decided to invest in beautifully designed slides with punchslide.com because I knew that this talk was one I was going to give again and again and again. And I actually posted the link to that masterclass in our Facebook group. The difference was night and day. I looked so uptown. Oh, good. <laughs> I mean, I looked so uptown and it was like, it was night and day. So if, when, let's put it that to you that way, when you have a talk that rocks and you keep getting invited to give that talk again and again, even with your simple slides made with 123 royalty free or whatever images that you find online that are legitimate for you to use, take the leap to use punchslide.com or something like it because they just have this um, that's what they do. They just turn your lackluster slides into really dialed in, beautiful, visually intoxicating images that give the, the audience's eye someplace to land while you as the presenter bring the content alive. And it just made a huge difference for the experience for the audience, but it also was a huge boost to my confidence as a speaker. And it, it just helped set me apart from others who were doing the same old straightforward PowerPoint thing. So punchslide.com gets my highest recommendation. And you know, you pay a few dollars to do it, but if it's a talk that's gonna be rocking again and again and again, it's an investment well worth making. And those are a couple of thoughts for you. Great, thanks so much. Yeah, so Ginny, Ginny, I'm so glad you're calling. Let's see if that sounds better. Let's see. I'm no. Good morning. I am unmuted. Good morning. Yay! Doesn't sound okay. like Minnie Mouse. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on with, with that microphone. It does it occasionally. And, well, you know, that's uh, the neat thing about it. Sometimes, and sometimes it's fine, so I don't know what's going on. Well, you know what? Millions of years ago, when things like that would happen, being a bit of a perfectionist, I would get myself all wrapped up in my underpants and just try to wonder why I couldn't fix it and why I didn't know, why I didn't know the answer. And, and so now I go, oh, I know an alternative solution. Let's give her the dial-in instructions. You notice like, Absolutely. <laughs> and as, as speakers, you know, sometimes you get to the thing and the PowerPoint doesn't work. Or you get there and the remote doesn't work and you have to move the slides manually or some crazy thing will happen that you weren't expecting. And then you can either be really frazzled about it or you can say, oh, let's find an alternative. Let's invite yep. the audience. Anyone have any suggestions? And um, you know, I'll tell you one little story before we get to you, to, to your speaker sheet, which is awesome. But I was actually giving a talk for a group of real estate professionals and, um, right in the middle of it, somebody's phone rang and, um, and I said, oh, that must be for me. <laughs> and then about five minutes later, the PA system went like loud and I could hear every conversation that was going on in the bar and nobody could hear a word about me <laughs> and I said to the audience what should we do to solve this problem you know and it was like oh my god <laughs> sometimes weird things happen you have no idea so anyway you did a really nice job on this thank you and um and, and you've already given me suggestions that I'm really eager to start on draft two because I've already got a whole sheet full of ways to make it better. So 
Yeah, and that's the beauty of having, you know, four opportunities for us to talk over the month of August is because if you want to take it from lackluster to blockbuster, it's just sometimes small kaleidoscope changes that you turn to the right and you're all good. So um, uh, we don't have to re restate what I um, said in, in the direct, in, in, the, in, the, in the Facebook group, but I wanted to comment, I wanted to talk a little bit about your, your topic because it says Ginny's most requested topics, plural. And, and so the first one says nonprofit superheroes, you know, you communicate, you care. And, and so when I read this, it looked like this was one whole topic that related. So is it a plural topic or is it, is it? It's a plural topic. As you know, Nancy, I do a lot of training. And and so, so when you're talking about tech problems, I'm I'm familiar. Uh, and and <laughs> technology's our friend until it's not, right? Right. Um, but I do a lot of training, and and I don't really care if they book this as as speaking, you know, as as <laughs> as keynotes, or if they book these as workshops. I don't. I don't really care which way they book this. So that's and right, so, so right there, right there. Um, um, if you do it, if you have a ninety-minute deal, a one-day thing, or a, you know, if you give them the choice, because that's the part that was sort of missing for me, is I wasn't sure. Like with Tommy as, exa as an example, she has a ninety-minute leadership team brown bag event it's a lunch and learn where we work on a b c d and e she also has an impactful leadership strategy day which is a one day thing where they cover a b and c okay i'll look at hers and, and see and how I, that's set up i think that this would serve you um really well to give them a choice because they are they are separate topics no is the, the no section, and, and I said no, communicate and care. Um, they're all aimed at nonprofit people. Mm -hmm. um, they're mostly aimed at people who work at nonprofits or board members of nonprofits. Um, and and the first part, the no part, is the nuts and bolts. It's about it's about things that everybody who works at a nonprofit has some part in. And needs to know about fundraising, operations, planning, and people. Great. And then, and then communicate is my public speaking topic, and that one's really popular. And that one's really crossover. It doesn't have to be nonprofit people, but that's that, nonprofits really my target audience, because um, I have something of a profile there already. So that's my that's my easiest way in to do anything else. But public speaking is is um, I call it effective presentations in other places. I've done it as a workshop. I've done it as a talk. I've done it for welcome uh, for uh, Women's Professional Network in that in that half hour slot. Um, and I do it and I and I've also done it as a four hour workshop. So and oh. then the care one is the third one is that that self-care thing that nonprofit people especially people who work at nonprofits really really need because nonprofits will will work people to death and so that overcome the overwhelm piece which people have loved um and and then and then talking about how do you set up a reciprocal relationship so you're getting what you need while you're giving the organization what they need and and it's all it's all about mission driven people who people who are mission driven they work for nonprofits because they're mission driven so i tried to pull them into it's one thing but it's never going to be one thing right <laughs> okay so i have um that's helpful because it's one audience but it's never going to be one talk let me put it that way yeah. So what if we're just, that's why I wanted to dialogue with you because if there was, um, if there was an additional block of text somewhere and it said something like whether your nonprofit 
needs a a 60 minute keynote a, a four hour workshop or an all day or anything in between or an all day um a strategy day whatever we're going to call it yeah one retreat is, usually yeah retreat count on Ginny to okay because right out of the box we we know that we're letting them know that you have the flexibility to deliver to suit a variety of scenarios that's okay. a that's a benefit to them that they don't have to go searching for because okay. it's going to be right out in front and um so that I think is a value. That's a that's that's a value. Then um, of these, you said the communicate <laughs> one is is pretty popular, and it's your entree to getting invited in to do more to, to do more. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, and it also crosses over. I'm invited to do that. <clears throat> a board member will be in the room, and they work for. They're, they're a board member, they're a volunteer, and, and, and I do this for a nonprofit. And then I have been invited to then come to their business and do it. It has been an entree to cross over out of the nonprofit sector and do this same, this, this same talk for um, other kinds of, for other people. Um, oh, okay. Um, so I'm going to ask you another question. Um, and okay. we're just digging around. Yeah, yeah. Do you, get, do you get paid to speak or do you get, do this for free? I typically get paid to speak. I right. will do it for free. I do it for free at conferences and things like that. But typically when I go in to a, to a single nonprofit or, or a group <laughs> of nonprofits that brings me in or um, a company or something like that, I get paid to do it. Okay. So where what I was trying to get to here is, Sometimes if we lead with the thing that gets booked the most, we'll get a whole lot more of everything that we want. Okay. So if the communicate, I mean, if the communicate thing could be first, I mean, if it's your most popular talk, I mean, when you lead with what your most popular talk is and then you have additional topics waiting in the wings that can meet and delight their audiences and serve them, that's another way you can do it. But I have a dog too. Hey, Kara. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry about that. I just realized I wasn't muted. <laughs> yes, I'll show you. This is a, oh, he doesn't want to be, he doesn't want to be on camera, but uh, there he is. That's Champ. Hey, what a cutie. hey Champ. <laughs> <laughs> We're just friends here. <laughs> um, sometimes if you give them too many topics, they won't they'll be confused and they won't decide right so if you have one that's tried and true and reliable that opens the door re reliably every single time you know you can say our most popular topic or our most requested topic is this one and these are additional ones that can serve and delight and inspire but if you lead with the one that's the strongest there's a couple advantages to that one is that there's less preparation required on your part to get ready to rock. You can just make it better every time you do it and um, make everybody's life really easy because it's very familiar to, to you. And, you know, I don't know about you, but sometimes when I have a new topic, I spend a whole lot more time preparing for it and sure. it takes a lot more time. And if I'm doing it for free, then that's a bummer. If I'm getting paid for it, I feel more pressure. I, I'm just sharing some of those like real life things that happen. So I understand what you're doing with the you know you communicate and you care, but I'm not, I'm not as, I'm not, the reason I wanted to talk to you about it is I think that if you lead with the topic that's the sexiest and the most reliable, you'll get more of those opportunities. Okay. And it's just another way to format it that could work for you. So since it's just a Word document, what does it cost you to try to like move it around and see, see if we like sure. it better, right? Okay. And then, okay. The other yeah. th then the other thing I wanted to say about your, um, I want to make a comment about bullet points. Um, um, well, let's just talk about the communicate one. It's a big fear for everybody and the talk is keeping them awake at night. And um, uh, 
uh, you can, the whether it's a presentation you can look and feel confident, I would put that as part of the description and then I would make, because it doesn't feel like a bullet point to me, um, because I want to know specifically like three uncommon ways to look and sound confident even when your stomach is rumbling and you're afraid for your life. <laughs> That's a bullet point because we're giving them three uncommon ways to calm their nerves and um, appear confident even though they may not be feeling that way. I'm looking at your face and I'm, you're not sh Whether it's a presentation- I'm, I'm looking at the other screen and reading what you're talking about. So. Oh, oh, okay. You can look and sound confident. Like, okay, that's great. That, but now I want to know how. So I want to know like, the three uncommon ways or the three tried and true um, methods or the surprising but simple way to slay fear. What I just did there is I made, I it, made it a little bit hotter, you know, more of like, oh, wow, like I'm not going to zone in on, I'm not going to ask her to send me the PowerPoint. I want to know that one sizzling uncommon way because someone with veteran experience such as yourself, you probably know a whole lot more than the rest of us about how to do that but you see how that would be kind of sizzly <laughs> so the one uncommon way learn how to organize your presentation so that's sort of generic but it would be even better if it says this the surprisingly simple way to organize your presentation pra how to pr practice and present so you look like a rock star okay because learn how is very straightforward, but when you say the surprisingly simple way, people have done it the hard way for years, but if you have a surprisingly simple way, like, show me the way. <laughs> you see okay. How? This adds a little I bit. I see. Detail. And this other one is really good. Discover the four big tips to overcome your discomfort. I love that one. But you see, that's a really good bullet point, but the other two were a little bit um, soft. And, and making them, just putting a little more specificity there just adds the sizzle that people will choose you over somebody else. The same thing I would say with the other ones, no, the four basic tools to running a successful nonprofit, um, operating everything been effective meetings, planning, people. Like what I'm wondering about this, Ginny, is, these are the these are the four basic tools to running a successful nonprofit. <coughs> Could you do a bullet point about fundraising, a bullet point about operations? So when when no one wants when no one what's the one like I'm gonna just pull this from air. Okay. How can you help your volunteers find a new gear at the eleventh hour? You know, that would be a bullet point about people that's relevant to nonprofits. I'm sure okay. people would be interested in that. Like volunteers burn out, they come and go, you can't rely on them. Like how can you, how can you compel them to find a new gear to meet the mission when everybody's exhausted? Okay. What do you think about that? Okay, I, I, see, I see where you're going that each one of these is, each one of these is more active and less descriptive. Yes. And, and what we're trying to get to is a takeaway point. As a direct result of attending this session, you're gonna walk away gotcha. with these new discoveries, these new insights, these new tried and true, method, tried and true methods that re reliably deliver the goods. And if, if, if they are taking valuable time away from their day-to-day -to, -day to be in the room with you, they wanna come away with these five juicy nuggets that are going to change the game. And, and for all of you, this is the case. Look at your bullet points and say, boy, is that a talk I'd want to go to? And are those three to five juicy nuggets that I can't wait to put into my toolbox so that I can have the outcome that's being promised? And if it feels too informational and not, um, not too much of like a benefit to me, then, then, then you want to rework it. 
like on the care, learn four steps to overcome overwhelm. Even adding an adjective, reliable steps, game-changing steps, <laughs> um, heart-stopping steps. Like if you're overwhelmed, heart-stopping steps. It's like, okay, <laughs> I want to overcome the overwhelm. Get energized to stay sharp and avoid burnout. This would be um, three new ways to get energized. Discover the secret the, the, um, the, to getting what you need from your work so you have more to give back. Discover the surprising secret. Just even adding a descriptor, a word in front of something gives it a little bit okay. more sizzle. And then because you, you have you have a list of those at the end of the the template at the end of the sheet. Yeah, so just, you know, borrow and lend, see what you can find that would add the sizzle. And then with regard to sizzle, I, I would be remiss if I didn't say this too. Some industries are staid and conventional and some industries are more cutting edge and new. And we all have to walk a line between how much sizzle will be right for our particular audience. In my new role with Life Goes On Roadmap, we deal with a lot of financial advisors and they're very resistant to hype. They don't like false urgency. They don't like, um, they, they want it to be pretty straightforward. And you can imagine how that's a big of a mind bender for me because I'm someone who likes to put the sizzle in most things. So dialing it back is like, oh my God, this is really new experience <laughs> for me. <laughs> <laughs> so I bring that up, Ginny, because with the nonprofit world, I don't know what the tone is, but I thought of another benefit for you that, that might be something to play with. Because you've got a degree in theater and have performed as a singer and, a, and an actress and a director, you have the uncanny ability to read the room you have the uncanny to, uh, ability to read the room, meet the client where they live, and deliver the impact in just the right style and tone. Isn't that intoxicating? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> I'm writing. I'm writing. <laughs> well, and, and you know, it's 50 minutes into the call, so when you get the replay, you can just note, okay, 50 minutes, I'm gonna fast forward to 50 minutes when I look at the sure, replay and sure. I'm gonna capture that. And why did I mention that? Because Ginny's bio was three paragraphs long and she has all this, I mean, her whole worksheet went on for one, two, three, four pages, five pages, right? Four pages. But a speaker sheet has to be tight and concise and the most number of pages you're gonna have is two. So when I read all of this about your background, as in theater and as a director and as a singer, I thought to myself, I love that, but maybe there's another way to use it somewhere else to be a benefit to the people who are buying. Because what I noticed right away is this is one gal that's not going to be a snoozer. You're going to know how to engage the audience. You're going to read the room. You're going to perform in a manner that is on the money to meet the mission. On the money to meet the mission. That's a line. That's a good one. <laughs> That's a keeper. <laughs> this is the benefit of showing up for these live calls because when we get to dialogue and I get to know what you're about, the stuff just comes out. But on the money to meet the mission, that could be a tagline yes. that would really resonate with your group. Don't you think? Yes, yes. Well, and one of the things that rises to the top, of course, for every nonprofit, what rises to the top is fundraising. So saying the word money in there, too, is, is just... Always on the money to meet your mission. Always uh -huh. on the money to meet your mission. Ginny's your go-to gal to make sure that that job gets done. I mean, that's so energized. That's so full of life. It's so good. So are you inspired to take another shot at another draft so we can see the transformation from a really good effort to an even better one? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. I'm eager to get back into this now. <laughs> the first one, the first, 
you will, you know, the first draft is 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 a slog. It was really good. But first draft is pulling information yeah. and and doing all that. The first draft is hard, but now, yeah, I'm eager to get back into this and 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 see how much better I can make it. On the me. money to meet your mission. Just curious. Raise your uh, hand or type into the chat. Does anybody like that as much as I do? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I just I just love it. I, just I do. Love it. <laughs> Kara likes it. Kara likes it. So anyway, so we've got a few more minutes and Kara's here. So do you feel like you got some value, Ginny, from today's talk? I sure did. Thank you so much, Nancy. I appreciate it. You're welcome. I'm so glad we were able to work through the tech issues and everything else like that. And so, Kara, I'm going to put you on mute now since we have solved that and so much okay. more. And let's see what uh, Kara has to say. You are live. Let's see. You are live. Say hi there. Hi. How are you? Good. Have so you learned I, anything so far during our oh, call? Yes, absolutely. And I'm working on paring everything down and putting in your uh, suggestions. Excellent. So a couple quick questions. Um, because I don't have a lot of speaking experience on a stage, mostly guest teaching and things like that, would it be worthwhile to, for me to put that I was a featured leader at these certain events and retreats that have happened? And how do I go about saying that? Do I say just the name of the event, like Captivating Feminine Leadership, or do I say the name of the person who put the event on? Um, well, it would depend. Do the names have star power or recognition? Like, you know, sometimes you mention, like I shared the stage with Brendan Burchard or Jack Canfield or somebody like that who's got a big name that millions of people know. The people that you've been sharing the stage with, are they people like that? Um, in a really small way, maybe. Okay. Like, I mean, a couple people might know the name in the very small coaching niche, but otherwise, not really. Well, um, throw something together and let's see it. Okay. You know, because there are riches in niches, Kara. Just because okay. everybody doesn't know everybody in the, in the thing. Um, you know, in certain niches, there are people that are just known for being influential and powerful in that space. So don't, don't. Don't go self-deprecating on us too early in the game. Okay. <laughs> you know, and, 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 and sometimes, sometimes you, we start where we are and then we grow. You know, I remember the very first show I ever did was something like Mom Talk Radio, Blog Talk Radio. It was something I'd, I'd never been on the radio. I'd never been on TV. I'd never been on a stage. And so I just thought, where could I speak? And I got on all these like little shows and the benefit of getting on little shows is that you get to work on your sound bites and you get to work on your delivery. And if you rock it, good for you. And if you duff it, maybe not too many people heard it anyway. <laughs> yeah. But then when you get invited to do other things that are bigger and better, it's like notches on the bedpost, you know? It's like, okay, well, now that I've done NBC and NPR and CBS, I can drop mom talk radio from my 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 portfolio i don't have to hang my hat on that right right yeah so grow where you are and don't be embarrassed or anything just be proud and loud and proud to the extent that you want to be okay yeah. and then a quick question on the bio so i'm shortening it up is there a good example of really good bios specific for a speaker sheet am I, because i'm torn between am i trying to tell the person who's reading the speaker sheet why they should choose me or am i giving them the bio like they're going to read at the beginning of the oh that's such a good question that's a really good question so the easy squeezy lemon easy answer is on the files tab of the facebook group there are some after version speaker sheets that are posted there and you can I call this R and D, rob and duplicate, <laughs> um, but don't plagiarize. Right. Very important. You can Morgana Ray's bio on her speaker sheet is excellent. Tommy Wolf's bio on her speaker sheet is excellent. Um, those two come to mind right away. So 
You'll notice about their bios is they're first positioning themselves as speakers that rock the stage and secondarily suggesting the other roles that they play that add value to that. And so mirror the example of, of Morgana or Tommy in your own, and that's what's going to go on your speaker sheet. When you get introduced on the stage, I highly recommend that you create what you want the audience to hear so that they want to jump to their feet and clap even before you speak your first word. And that may not be the same as what it says on the speaker sheet. It could be something like, I'm going to use Virginia, Ginny as an example because I'm a little more familiar with her background. We are so fortunate today to have a world class nonprofit expert in our presence. And in the next 20 minutes, you are going to learn five things that are going to change the game at your nonprofit, and you're going to have fun while you do it. Please join me in welcoming Jenny Lang to the stage. What I did there, just on the fly, is I tried to make the content intoxicating to get the attention of the people in the room. I didn't want to bore them, bore them with what, how many degrees she has or, or how many certifications she has. I wanted to say what's in it for the audience so that they can't wait to hear what's next. And that's what, really what I want you to do. You know, in the next 20 minutes, you are going to be so riveted by this remarkable delivery style and this point of, this style of humor and the powerful actionable content that will help your nonprofit rock in ways that you had no idea could happen in just 20 minutes. Are you excited? Please join me in welcoming because the, and the way you get introduced is a way to set the tone. And then I would say one other little corollary to that from my most recent experience speaking at a conference. Have you ever gone to a conference and watched the other speakers that were there and noticed in the audience that people are looking at their phones and texting and doing their social media? I was watching this keynote speaker and like 30% of the room was not looking at her. They were looking at their phones. And I said to my husband, could we be the kind of speaker that when we get up there, we are looking in eyeballs instead of foreheads? And that's what happened because we set that intention. Mm -hmm. But you as a speaker, you're, you, maybe you can even say that. She's the kind of speaker that will call you to put your phone down and give her your complete attention. Yeah. Because these phones have, it's so discourteous to it is. speakers that have spent hours preparing to, to behave in this manner. <laughs> yeah. So you have more questions? That was it. You nailed it. Oh, awesome. Okay. So gosh, we're right on time. So um, on a scale of one to 10 with 10 being, this was really great. And one being, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. How much value did you get? Are you glad you came? I like to hear that from <laughs> people. <laughs> Oh gosh, Virginia says we've got a 15, eight, and yes, so glad I came. That's great, awesome. And um, Lori says yes, Lori says 10. So what you might do, thank you so much for saying that. You might even post a comment in the Facebook group. Boy, folks, if you don't show up for these live calls, you're missing out on so much because there's a lot of magic that's happening live and, and so helpful to all of us. And um, because we've got 15 people enrolled, but I think we've only got well, like four, we had five people, one, two, four of you joined us. So most people will perhaps join on the replay, but I think this is where it's really fun. We get to know each other. We get to see each other. We get to um, get some real value. And so your mission, should you choose to accept it, if you've already got a sloppy first copy, now I want you to have an even sizzling, more of a sizzling copy. And I want you to post it as soon as possible. And of course, during the week, Monday through Thursday, I'm in the Facebook group responding, commenting, helping. And then next Thursday, we'll have another call. And I'm imagining that we're all going to want to put our champagne on ice because by the time we're done here, we're going to have something that each one of you will have something that you're going to be super proud of. And maybe if the overachievers in the group are going to be so excited about their message that they're going to go out and ask for a gig right away and have something to tell us about, which would make me really, really happy. So I'm glad you came. 
it's always a pleasure to get to connect with you all in these ways. And uh, I think that uh, Ginny, I am super excited to see the next version. <laughs> All right, so I guess we did it. So um, have a great rest of the day and I will be seeing you in the Facebook group. Keep up the great work and keep your eye on the prize. All right, thanks everybody. Bye for now.